to our second installment of our three-part setting bed series. I'm Laura Cheney. And I'm Larry Jackson. Hopefully you were able to tune in two weeks ago as Lee and Dusty outlined the components of a sand setting bed and those necessary to achieve interlock stability. This week we're going to heat things up. Yeah, and by heating things up, Laura means we're going to go to a setting bed called bituminous that's delivered hot to the job site. But we're going to talk about the composition of that in just a minute. But I want to give you a little history on uh, the bituminous setting bed. Um, a lot of you out there that's watching this today have probably had some experience with bitumen um, uh, in the installation and also specifying it. But I'm sure there's a lot of you that's looking at this today thinking, what is a bituminous setting bed? Well, the bituminous setting bed was developed in the early 1900s, so it's been around for quite a while, but it was mostly used in the Northeast um, in the last 50 or 60 years. But uh, there was a group of installers in New York that developed this special mixture because they were laying a lot of natural stone or pavers that didn't have spacer beds, like clay paving, or like this Hanover asphalt paver that doesn't have spacer beds. And when you don't have spacer load on a product, they set very tight to each other. So you don't get a surcharge into the sand to lock them in. So these pavers would just float and they found that the pavers do lock um, if they don't have spacer load. So they come up with this uh, bituminous setting bed to stabilize these pavers. So one of the challenges that we encounter in the industry a lot is sand migration. And the, sand, the bituminous setting bed mixture is 93% sand, 7% asphalt cement. So essentially it is a sand setting bed, but that 7% asphalt cement is acting as a binder to hopefully eliminate that sand migration. The other challenge that we run into a lot with the bituminous setting bed is really just lack of knowledge. There's a lot of contractors that don't have experience with the bituminous setting bed. So when they see it in the specification, they might get a little bit nervous. Uh, they see that it has to come to the job site hot. It, it has to be uh, kept 300 to 350 degrees when it arrives. It comes to source from a local batch plant as opposed to their maybe the regular batch or the uh, asphalt plant that they're dealing with. So sometimes there's it can get a little intimidating for them. However, the um, there's no need to uh, no need to worry. The um, the one of the challenges or the things to remember with a bituminous setting that it does have to be installed over a concrete slab. So Larry's going to share a detail with you regarding the uh, installation of the bituminous. Right, and then it's cross section that you're going to see on here. Um, you know, if you call Hanover and ask Hanover, okay, I got a pedestrian application or I got a vehicular application, what do you recommend? We're always going to recommend what you're seeing here in this cross section because we feel a concrete slab and a bituminous setting bed is the absolute best. It's the Cadillac of the installation. Now. As you notice in that detail, you have a four inch concrete sub. The sub base there is typically for vehicular loading. If you've got uh, cars, heavy trucks like streets and crosswalks, you definitely want to use a four inch concrete slab. Now, if you're going um, with a pedestrian application, maybe a little bit of overkill for the concrete. So what um, was used quite often is binder. And it's the same binder your DOT uses under the roads. Um, which is have a larger aggregate in it, they put it down and they roll it and make sure it's compacted. And one thing I do want to say, say here, and I've always said in all my presentations to the architects when they're designing things, your base is so important. Your base has to be stable because whatever the base does, your surface pavers are going to do the same thing. So if it moves below, it's going to move on top. So we're going to share a photo here. This is um, when the Bitum arrives at the, uh, to the job site and they're screening it out. It's going to be dispensed incrementally in a wheelbarrow or a skid loader. Um, you're going to screen it out just like a sand setting bed in uh, manageable sections, three quarters of an inch thick. You don't want to go too thick as if um, you gonna, if you screen that bitum out too thick, you could have depression and then you're going to have an uneven surface. So screening that bitum out. At this point, you're also going to determine the intended use as far as are you going to leave it what would be considered a fluff setting bed or are you going to roll that setting bed? So in the next photograph, you're going to see it. We're going to share with you a, a rolling of that setting bed and see how that setting bed actually physically changes in appearance. That roller seals off all those fissures and gives a nice clean tabletop like surface for the pavers to rest on. This is extremely important if you're going to be using a neoprene paver adhesive. 
which we'll talk about some of those details later. Um, if you're going to be using an unrolled setting bed, that would be in the case if you have larger slab pavers or if it's strictly pedestrian. If you are using smaller unit pavers, in particular loading applications, then we want to see that by doing a setting bed roll. And if you notice in that slide, this guy, when he actually rolled it, he's actually walking on the setting bed. You can't do that with sand or the fluff five tool. You want to make sure that you leave them uh, fluffed a little bit so you get a certain, little bit of a surge on them. But with the roll bike unit, it's, uh, it's nice and flat, like you said, to use the wheel. So the, uh, large, if you're using the larger slabs, you can't run the vibratory plate impactor over the surface of those. So you can simply use a rubber mallet uh, to kind of persuade those papers into place and make those minor adjustments for your final, ele uh, final elevations. Also recommended anytime you put papers on bituminous setting bed, because that bituminous setting bed doesn't have the same forgiveness as a sand setting bed, we're going to recommend that they're gauged. What we do, uh, all of Hanover pavers are manufactured with an industry tolerance, plus or minus an eighth of an inch, but we're going to run through on the machine and we're going to get that a little bit closer. We're going to make that a 30 second. This is extremely helpful in the installation of the pavers for the contractor. They can simply pull those pavers off the pallet and lay them and they don't have to worry about that paver paper offset that they might. And with the, with the neoprene, uh, you don't want to put down a heavy uh, amount of neoprene, you just want to skim coat it right away. Skim coat, 100% uh, coverage is not required for paver masking. When you put it on, you're going to use a straight edge trowel as opposed to a notched edge trowel. You just squeegee that on. You don't want to butter the back of the pavers. You don't want to make up any imperfections in the setting bed with the paver mastic. Eventually what's going to happen is going to make its way up through the surface and stain the pavers. So that's something that's extremely important to think about when you're using uh, paver mastic. The, um, when Larry was talking a little bit earlier about the surcharge, the paver mastic, one of the benefits of using that because you, the bituminous setting bed doesn't have that same benefit, the paver mastic acts as an adhesive and locks those pavers to the setting bed. We talked about working in manageable sections. It's extremely important with paver mastic that you do work in those manageable sections. Once you trowel that on, you're actually going to see a physical, the physical appearance of the paver mastic is going to change. It's going to uh, flash off. When that happens, then it's time to go ahead and lay those pavers. If you work too far ahead, and your neoprene flashes off and it's going to lose some of its adhesion if you leave it sit too long, then the papers won't stick to it. So it does no good at that point. Right. And one of the things, again, I want to, to reiterate that if you've got a fluff setting bed, you don't use the pack tape. You could leave that go. Um, you only use it on the roll bike units. And I do get questions a lot of times that um, because you're using an adhesive mm -hmm. and you're gluing the paper to the setting bed and the setting bed is attached to the subdivision to the concrete. Uh, do you need an edger screen? Very important, always use an edger screen. Edger screen and base are the two most important uh, components of a paver system. Because if either one of them fails, you're just as bad. Right. So then your next step in the bituminous setting bed is going to be to sand your joints. If uh, you're using larger slab pavers, you won't run that plate compactor over. Smaller unit pavers, after you sand those joints, you're still going to run a plate compactor over the surface of um, of your installation. And um, so that's going to finish things off for you. The, uh, hopefully that we've uh, settled some of the fears or maybe some of the questions that you've had about a bituminous setting bed and it won't be as intimidating the next time you see it in that specification. Yeah, and if you have questions, please call us. Uh, you know, we're all available here to help. It's, it is kind of scary when you're working with something new at first, but after you do it once or twice, we will help you get through it. We'll help you find out where to get the product at, and we'll walk you through it. After you use it once or twice, you'll find that it's really not that hard to do. We are always available at Let's Get Tech at HanoverPavers.com. Send us an email and join us in two weeks as Harold Henry is going to set the path for, with our latex modified border installation. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.